we have another special guest on the sidelines of the IFA Basel Congress, Mr. Mike Williams, who heads the business tax division at the UK uh, Treasury. Uh, Mike, you are a little bit on the line of fire there over the UK diverted profit tax and questions being asked very politely about whether it amounts to a treaty override, whether the UK is reneging on some of its interna international obligations and whether it is pre-legislating some of the BEPS uh, action plan. I, mean, I think there are two points there, one about treaties, the other about the BEPS uh, relationship, the link between the DPT and BEPS. I mean, I think on the first point, we took an awful lot of legal advice from uh, external lawyers, very distinguished people, to make sure that we did stay within our treaty obligations. Uh, and as I said on the panel just now, I think the key point is, relates to the way the UK treaties work, that they don't just operate themselves. There has to be UK domestic law that also applies. That domestic law doesn't cover the diverted profits tax, and it's not intended to extend the law to cover that. Therefore, we are outside the treaties. Uh, I mean, clearly, we are outside the treaties quite deliberately, but even had we been in the treaties, there is provision in the Model Tax Convention for domestic anti abuse legislation, and the DPT is a form of domestic anti abuse legislation. As to the link to the BEPS project that you also asked about, well, you know, yes, we're very engaged in the BEPS project and we want it to be successful, but equally, you know, when, when it became clear at, as part of the BEPS project that there are, there are defences that other countries already have that the UK didn't have, then you know, it was sensible to introduce the DPT now. You know, why, if you're trying to combat aggressive tax planning that you know, the public is against, why should you wait? You mm -hmm. know, other countries are not I think, waiting. Are you surprised by the pushback that the DPT has received from from a section of the, the MNCs, the tax professionals? Are you surprised? No, not really. I mean, I think it is a tax increase on uh, businesses that are engaged in aggressive tax planning. You know, it would be surprising had they been pleased. You know, and inevitably that they, 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 they would rather that we had not introduced the DPT. Uh -huh. Mike, uh, you know, uh, before we come to uh, the, the operational aspects of BEPS and certain important initiatives that you are driving, uh, over the last uh, 24, 36 months, you've seen a lot of citizen activism when it comes to tax. Many people have have alluded to the fact that tax has moved from the business pages to the front pages. It happened first in the UK with all the agitation about Starbucks, about Vodafone, and then the parliamentary uh, committee hearings, which the UK PAC hearings, which, which got worldwide coverage. Do you think that really set the tone and the mood for BEPS? I think... And how has it impacted the overall, uh, the tax atmosphere? I think it, it, it's dangerous to see BEPS is driven by solely sort of concerns in the UK. I mean, as John Taylor on the last panel said, you know, there's public concern in Australia, for Absolutely. example, on the other side in of the India world. In India as well. Yeah. Uh, and I did a panel, what, 18 months ago in Paris uh, about digital tax, tax on uh, the digital economy, where, you know, there was a great interest in, say, France. So, I mean, I, I don't think it's just a UK issue, although I think it's fair to say that you know, interest varies across countries. Some countries are more engaged, uh, some less. I think you know, two factors are key. One, the rules had become outdated. That the rules hadn't been updated to reflect modern commerce, to reflect developments in technology uh, on the one hand. Uh, and on the other, you know, there, there were businesses that were paying very little tax. And when you know, people were having to tighten their belts following the financial crisis, you know, everybody was more concerned about looking to see whether people were paying their fair shares. And I think it's, you know, it's those two things that, that have come together. Uh, BEPS, uh, UK is deeply engaged, and uh, you are leading quite a few initiatives uh, as well. Are you happy a month to go, four weeks to go, before the final reports on many action plans are in? Are you happy where we are at right now? I think we, we, we've made very good progress. I mean, I don't want, you know, with a month to go to preempt what, what the outcome will be, not least because inevitably in the last stages uh, the scope for things to change. I think, you know, if you look at the t even taking the 2014 actions of their own, they themselves are very important. Uh, maybe I would mention in particular the template for country by country reporting to tax administration. Is that a game changer? I think. And I, I know that my U.S. counterpart, Bob Sack, has cited it as a very important thing. Whether I go as far as a game changer, I'm not sure, but a very significant change. You know, 
if you look to the future, if you've got a business that is doing activities, say, in a high tax country, in India, in the UK, uh, and hasn't got many activities in, in a tax haven somewhere, yet is having to tell the tax administration that most of its profits uh, are in a tax haven, is it not going to think twice before it does that sort of tax avoidance or that sort of tax planning? And I, you know, I think that will make a significant difference. I think some businesses think that will make a difference. Uh, do you think uh, this entire uh, uh, argument or a little bit of complaints from the MNCs that it's going to add significant cost compliance, a lot of time, resources, uh, do you sympathize with some of those concerns? Well, I think we need to make sure that we minimize the burdens on business from BEPS and indeed from all other initiatives. Equally, I think we have to accept that modern business is very complicated. Yeah. You know, it's not, we're not in a world where, you know, the subsidiaries uh, of, of a business were basically a country subsidiary in each different country. You, know, you would have an India subsidiary, you would have a South Africa subsidiary, you would have a UK subsidiary. You know, and then they didn't really interact with each other because geography made it too difficult and there was no technology. You know, we're in a world where each of the different parts of a business tend to interact much more with each other because geography is less of a problem. So it is becoming harder to work out where the profits belong. You know, and BEPS should hopefully clarify that rather than make it more difficult. Mm -hmm. On the multilateral, multilateral instrument, it's probably one of the most important pieces uh, that will cement many of the action plans uh, and will bring dozens of countries uh, on, the, on the table for a historic renegotiation of tax treaties, thousands of tax treaties. You are chairing that group. Uh, could you tell us the work that's happening behind the scenes and what can we expect in the next six months on the multilateral instrument? Yeah, I mean, I think the multilateral instrument is important because many of the BEPS outputs are, as you said, related to tax treaties, and they are important, as we've just discussed. And what I think wouldn't be satisfactory would be then those changes to take effect over many decades as bilateral treaties were renegotiated treaty by treaty. And that, I think, then is the importance uh, of the multilateral instrument. In terms of where we are on it, well, we have to take the substance from the BEPS project and then reflect that in the multilateral instrument. So there's a sense in which our work can only start from the end of September, early October, when we have the finalised BEPS outcomes. You know, our job is then to create a, a legal treaty framework that reflects those outcomes to amend the existing treaties. And we will be doing that between sort of September this year and autumn next year. How difficult do you think that process is going to be? Uh, to arrive at that, uh, those, those final words and, and sentences and phrases which capture, in essence, the agreement of so many countries? I think it's quite challenging, and it's quite challenging because the 3,000 tax treaties are not uniform. You know, if we take the UK's tax treaties, you know, say our treaty with the US, for example, would be quite different from our treaties with most of the other EU member states. Yeah. Uh, and I think you would find that, again, you know, if you looked at other countries. On the other hand, our treaties with the other EU member states are really quite similar. And, but I think that illustrates the challenge. It's clear from the BEPS process what the end destination is. The problem is we all start in slightly different places with different wording for existing parts of treaties. And it's how, how do we cope with that? To me, it, it's a bit like a software upgrade. You know, if you are about to go on to a later version of Windows, not everyone will be starting with the same version. Absolutely. And how, how do we cope with that? And I think that will be the challenge. It's not the destination which will emerge from the BEPS outputs. It's how do we cope with the fact that we may not all be starting in exactly the same place. And I think that is the key sort of substance challenge of the work. But well, you're confident uh, that you will succeed and we yeah. will have a multilateral instrument. In I am confident that we will have a multilateral instrument. I am also confident that it will be a more efficient process to amending treaties than you know, 3,000 bilateral renegotiations. Last question. Uh, you had a, a good friend, colleague from UK, Philip Baker, passionately argue about taxpayer rights. There is a feeling that taxpayer rights could be a high-profile casualty of the BEPS outcome. Mm -hmm. Do you share that concern, or would you like to address that concern? Yeah, I mean, I think Philip is right to stress the need for the safeguarding of taxpayer rights. I would say that in the UK, 
we have a tax system that does uh, safeguard taxpayer rights and for example the EU member states uh, all have very extensive provisions uh, on protection of data, uh, data privacy uh, laws and we, we have been very concerned about that throughout the BEPS process. You know, we, we have been concerned about it equally on the various initiatives we take on exchange of information. You know, it, it is important that we protect data, otherwise people won't do the exchanges. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams, for that. Thank, Thank you so you. much, and all the best. Thank you.